Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Good morning, my name is Bill Floyd. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, close yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as a member of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that we are able to gather here this morning to praise and adore you, and thank you for the wonderful gifts that you have richly bestowed upon each of us. Open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that we can hear with great joy what you have for us this day. Amen. The celebration of the birth of Jesus, the prophecy of Isaiah, has been fulfilled. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I don't know about you, but uh, the presents have been torn open, the guests are gone, my house is a wreck, and I've just laid down for a long nap. Sound familiar? What have we lost during this celebration? I don't think many today think of themselves as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. And the shopping for gifts in the rush of the season, most did not show compassion, kindness, nor patience. I know I lost my patience after the first few stores I visited especially driving in the traffic. We have just experienced getting the best gift imaginable from our Father who loves us, warts and all. You can't buy this gift in a store. It can't be ordered from Amazon. It's free for the asking. All it takes is having faith. The gift isn't new, nor is it used. It has been in the planning since Adam and Eve first bitten to the fruit. We were created for fellowship with God and each other, but how easily we forget. There's a story about a scientist who was studying an ant colony in a farmer's field. 
It was the fall, and one day he was there when he felt the ground begin to shake under him and heard the roar of an engine. Looking up way down at the beginning of the row he was studying, he saw a tractor coming toward the colony. His heart was filled with sadness. How could he save this colony he had been working with and studying all summer? Looking down, he saw the ants going through their business, oblivious to what was happening. He began to stomp on the ground, trying to get their attention, but nothing happened. They continued to work, as ants do, storing up for the winter. He got down on his knees and pounded on the ground and yelled, trying to get their attention. But they continued to go about their business, not hearing or seeing him at all. If only he thought I could become an ant for just a moment, I could warn them, but he couldn't. Reminds me that God has done everything he could to get our attention from that time to bring us back into relationship with him. Nothing worked. So God, in his infinite wisdom, decided to gift us with himself, love personified in a small human baby, born into our world, and his mother called him Jesus. Some would accept him, others would betray and reject him, but Jesus lived his life in a way that would show us what a loving God would do to redeem his lost children. Jesus also gave us life, but he did more than that. He, in his loving kindness, gave us a great example of how to live life pleasing to him, but also beneficial to us. Jesus gave us the example of what love really looks like, a life filled with compassion as he healed the sick and comforted those who were hurting. In his kindness, he reached out to the outcast and ate with sinners. He showed humility as he knelt down and washed his disciples' feet. With meekness, he stood, did not try to resist, as he stood before Pilate's soldiers as they began to scourge him. And patience. He had patience with his disciple and loved them as they abandoned him and walked away one by one on the night that the soldiers came to take him away. These are the attributes that we should strive to have, compassion, kindness, humility, and patience. These are the attributes that we can learn from him. When Jesus was asked by one of the leading teachers, what is the greatest commandment? And he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and love your neighbors as yourself. If we can do this, we will begin to be formed into the image of Jesus. In the letter to the Corinthians, Paul describes the way of love, and he says this, So faith, hope, and love abide, three, three things, but the greatest of these is love. God is love. And his desire for all of us is that we be formed into the image of his son. Keep this in mind when you begin to take down your Christmas decorations, the tree, the wreaths, the manger scene, and store them away. Let's keep Jesus out all year long. Jesus is not seasonal. He is the reason for the season. He is eternal. He walks with us through the good times and the bad times and helps us through this life. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. May God richly bless you and yours today 
and always. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, help us to grow into your image. Help us to give the attributes that you showed so that we can truly love our neighbors as ourselves. Bless those, Lord, that are with us this morning and give them your peace and love, not only during this season, but always. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir an organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you. Mm -hmm.